Tennessee This Week from WATE 6 on your side starts now. And hello, everyone, and welcome to Tennessee This Week. I'm Bo Williams, and for Don Hudson, we've got a lot to talk about, uh, obviously coming off of Super Tuesday, and I want to welcome our panel of pundits to us right now, Shelly Breeding, Craig Griffith, and Michael Covington. Great to have all you guys here, as always, and looking here. forward to hearing what you have to say, both what happened locally as well as nationally. And that's kind of where I want to start tonight, uh, is, is really talking about anything that jumped out at you, uh, whether it be here in Knoxville or in Tennessee or uh, as far as the presidential primaries, when you look back on Super Tuesday. Craig, I'm going to start with you. Uh, what's the big takeaway? What did you take away, whether it was a surprise or, or, or what have you from Super Tuesday? Well, in the local elections, I think they uh, validated what you heard in your first civics or government class, that every vote counts. Mm -hmm. uh, we had two races that were extremely close, one decided by five votes and one decided by 12 votes. So it shows that everyone should get out and do their civic duty because every vote counts. Now, in terms of surprises, you know, I, I think that the uh, property assessor race was obviously very close. Uh, and while uh, the apparent winner, Phil Ballard, uh, he didn't violate the letter of the term limit law, I think, but kind of violated the spirit of it. The spirit of that law, I think, was to make room for new candidates, for new ideas over time. And while he sat out the time he needed to sit out to be eligible to run, that doesn't bring in new thinking, new people into the <laughs> civic sphere. So... Uh, statewide on the presidential race, no no surprises there. I mean, that was pretty pretty cut and dry, and uh, the way everyone predicted it would be. So we're back to the rematch. That's right. Got the rematch, and the countdown is on. Michael, let me ask you uh, kind of the same question. Your thoughts when you look back on Super Tuesday, anything that kind of jumps out at you, the big takeaway for you? Well, the big takeaway for me as it relates to Super Tuesday is that it wasn't super. <laughs> there were no real surprises and on Super Tuesday. Uh, Donald Trump performed as as uh, we figured he would. Um, Nikki Haley had no road left to travel. Um, there was no place for her to go but out. Um, she wants to try to use her position to leverage uh, influence with Donald Trump, and he has essentially ignored her and has appealed to her voters. They will, at some point down the road, decide between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, and most likely Nikki Haley's voters, with or without her support of Trump, are going to side with uh, uh, Donald Trump. Uh, no surprises on the Democratic side. Even the American Samoa uh, race that went to um, a challenger of the president, that was a little bit of a surprise, but just a, a blip on the radar. Um, it, it won't amount to very much. Uh, I am thinking that at some point, Subsequent to Super Tuesday, we're going to start to hear more about the um, uh, the two independent candidates that are that are probably going to hurt Biden more than they'll hurt Trump. So Super Tuesday was just not super. Locally, I was a little surprised that the property assessor race was as close as it was. I thought one or the other would distance themselves uh, with the amount of money they spent and and how hard they went at it to try to to uh, distinguish themselves. I was surprised that that 12 votes separated them, but uh, 12 votes is probably what's going to decide it. Uh, District 1, five points between those two candidates. I don't know that it really mattered. Um, the, the general election between Rawls and, and Frazier, um, I don't think there's a great deal of expectation for either of those candidates if they become county commissioner. So no real surprise there, No nothing earth-shaking. Shelley, same question to you. Uh, let me get your thoughts. Yeah, I think on the national level, I agree with Michael and Craig that, you know, there weren't a lot of surprises. It was pretty much what everyone expected was going to happen. I, I disagree with Michael that all of Nikki Haley's voters will come around to Donald Trump. I think that there are some pretty strong never Trumpers in the Republican Party. I happen to be friends with several of them who will not vote for Donald Trump. I don't think that they'll vote for Joe Biden, and I'm not sure who they're going to vote for. Um, but I don't think that they're all going to come to Donald Trump. Uh, on the local election, as an attorney, I was kind of surprised. I was very interested in the Knox County law director's race. And um, I was surprised there with Daniel Herrera, who had been chair of the Knox County Republican Party, that he didn't get a better showing. David Buke won by a wider margin than what I thought he would have. Uh, you know, Daniel Herrera has only been practicing law for about three years. David Buke's been in the law director's office. 
has some name recognition, had a lot of support. Um, I expected him to win, but maybe not by quite the margin that he won by. And, and that kind of leaves me. And to I'd, like, uh, Bo, no, I'd no. like to point out that, you know, we're talking about these tight races right. here and we're recording on, on Thursday evening. Right. And the, they will, uh, the election commission will meet Friday, last Friday, to decide the provisional ballots. Right, 71. And those provisional yeah. ballots could could change the results of the uh, property assessor's race. Probably not the, the commission race that was only decided by five, because there was only five provisional votes in that whole district. Mm -hmm. And they would have to all be accepted and all go for the one candidate to tie it. Right. So uh, it's possible something could impact the uh, property assessor's race, but that's that's in the future. And then I'd also like to mention, you know, um, I listened to an interview with Daniel Herrera, with uh, Don Dare of WATE on election day, and it, he didn't have a platform that was related to 2024. He was still arguing about issues that were in the past, mainly related to the pandemic issues. And that's that's uh, yesterday's papers. He didn't advocate why he would do a better job of steering Knox County in the issues that it's taking up it through the course, especially the uh, suits regarding uh, handicapped children that they don't uh, seem to have lost on a regular basis. Uh, so he didn't really take any issues that were uh, looking to the future. And I think that's one of the main reasons that he lost. Yeah. And that's kind of what my follow-up question to that is, is some of the reasons and, and, and Michael, is this something maybe we're going to be seeing, especially as we move on now to the general elections? People will talk about issues, but are we to the point now where we just want to hear what are you going to do? We can we can we can bring up topics all day long, but are we are, are we now to the point that we just want to hear? Okay, so what's the plan? Well, I think I think we are, and mm -hmm. um, I I interviewed a number of the uh, candidates, the forty five candidates that were in the race uh, for Knoxville Community Television, and. And there were several candidates who really did not seem to be locked in on local issues. They, they, their politics were driven uh, nationally, and 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 that's that's okay. Uh, but voters are are interested in you know where's the rubber going to meet the road in terms of what you're going to be about if you get elected. Mm. And Advance Knox was a question that I asked just about every single county commission candidate. And now we're starting to hear that there's going to be some pushback. There are going to be some folks that are in the the, the uh, general election that are going to be pushing back against uh, development in the the more rural areas of Knox County. So I'm really interested to see uh, if that that gains traction at some point. But that but voters are interested in what's going to be happening right, right in their neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Shelly, want to circle back to you going back to the law director race. Okay, so 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 Book has moved now moved on. Uh, Jackson Finner will be waiting for him now in the general election. What are your thoughts now as these two now square off uh, coming up later on in the year? Yeah, I think that's going to be a good race. Uh, Jackson Finner's practiced law, um, I think since around 2010, 2011, he ran for attorney general against Sharm Allen a couple of years ago. That race was fairly close for a Democrat in Knox County. He's got a, a lot of name recognition from that campaign. He's been out there. I think it's going to be hard to beat David Buke. He's there now as law director. I think he's done a good job. Um, he has some really good lawyers in his office, uh, which I think helps him a lot right now. He's got the former law director, Mike Moyers, in his office. He has David Sanders. Um, I think it's going to be hard to beat David Buke just because of where he is and he has that experience. But I think Jackson Fenner is a, a great candidate out there, and it's going to be interesting to see that one play out. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people will be keeping a close watch on that one. Craig, you kind of feel the same way as far as how this one may play out. I know it's, it's still early. It's a Republican county. <laughs> think, and we move on. <laughs> yeah, I think David David uh, will probably win uh, pretty easily. Do you, do you think, though, you, oh, you say easily, I was going to say, but do you think Jackson Finner has, 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 a, has a chance? Uh, the power of the incumbency, it's, mm -hmm. it's always there. And you have to knock out the champion. Uh, if you're going to try to replace him. And I don't know that there's a knockout vote for the law director's office unless, you know, somebody's caught with, you know, money in their desk drawer or something like that. But, you know, as it's a it's a Republican county, I think that in the end, David will win. But I wanted to circle back a little bit of what uh, Michael said about mm -hmm. uh, Vance Knox. And uh, depending on how the general election goes, some of the people uh, that were won the primary race 
we're re really talking about development issues in various right. parts of the county. Uh, and uh, it may be it, with if those people get elected, it may be a, a, a more difficult time on county commission for people to get development uh, deals through. Uh, so you know, whether that really happens, that many of them spoke about getting the infrastructure done, mm -hmm. you know, before you do the development. And that sounds really good, you know. Let's let's four lane this two lane road, or let's add a new classroom to that school to to take up for the the new children that will be going there for the development. But until the county actually comes up with some plan for uh, impact fees or development fees to to address this. Uh, it, it it won't happen. You'll still have the development, then the infrastructure trying to play catch up. Uh, I'm not I'm not exactly sure. I don't think the impact fees are actually legal in the county. Uh, it would require an action of the of the legislature, and I don't envision that ever happening. So it's difficult to see how you got, accomplish your goals on infrastructure first and then development without having some sort of impact fees to pay for it. Michael, kind of your thoughts, because that was a topic we were going to we, we were going to bring up as far as like uh, there were a number of anti-development platforms that were brought up that we were hearing from from some of the candidates uh, moving forward. Uh, and you've talked to a lot of those candidates. So let me get kind of your feedback on kind of what Craig was saying there, kind of play off of that and, and see what you think. Well, I, I think that there's re some real solid opposition to to at least the preliminary plan that has been um, that has gotten an, an initial vote. There are several more votes left, and the the thing that I that I would have to do some research on is with the general election for the county being in August. My question would be in my research: How many of those votes will take place before these new county commissioners are seated? And um, rural district eight, rural district nine will be dramatically impacted by this. And my guess is that we're going to hear a whole lot about that in the months leading up to the general election in August. All right. And on that note, we're going to stop right there. We need to take a quick break. Stay with us, though. We'll have more of Tennessee this week in just a moment. And welcome back to Tennessee This Week. I'm Bo Williams. Again, we're joined by our panel of pundits. We've been looking back on Super Tuesday. And just a reminder for you again, Craig brought it up earlier, but we are recording this on a Thursday night. This is before uh, President Biden has his State of the Union. Uh, there is a vote also, I should say, a, a counting of some votes and provisional ballots uh, on Friday in Knoxville or in Knox County. So there's some things still to happen between now when we record and when we actually will go on air. So I just wanted to go ahead and clear that up for you. But we do want to focus on the presidential primary. We touched on it a little bit at the top of the broadcast. And Craig, I'm going to go with you because we heard from Shell, we heard from Michael uh, as far as um, Nikki Haley and her supporters. A lot of people saying, you know, this could be, there's a big question mark there. Where is everybody going to go? So Craig, I, I want to give you a chance here. What, what are your thoughts as we now move forward, uh, start looking ahead to the fall? Uh, still a lot of question marks uh, concerning Nikki Haley's followers and will they go with Donald Trump or will they go with President Biden? Or will they not go anywhere and just stay home? Well, Nikki Haley only won two, two uh, primaries mm -hmm. in the District of Columbia and Vermont. And very few national elections have turned on the results of the Vermont general election. So I think they were they were minor victories for her. I think she was correct in terms of she was representing a wing of the Republican Party that uh, was not willing to go for Trump. But uh, three quarters of the Republican Party was willing to go for Trump. So all the polls seem to be correct. Now they're they're you know the Super Tuesday as non super as it was as Michael said uh, did, did show some chinks in the armor of uh, President uh, former President well President Biden and former President Trump mm -hmm. so we'll have to see how those go down the road uh, one of the big things for Trump is he's he's running out of money uh, there's uh, well that was a key for Haley to step out though wasn't it so that now as far as the RNC uh, funds becoming available if, if Haley finally obviously ceased her her run correct and hopefully at least uh, some, well, some I, I don't know that any of Nikki Haley's fundraisers uh, uh, donors are going to go for Trump mm -hmm. they would have been for Trump already uh, I think in, in, in that case those people will stop writing checks so uh, you know the the issue is how much longer is the RNC going to be paying for Trump's legal bills? Mm -hmm. uh, $50 million comes in handy in a general election against a well-funded opponent. 
So uh, we'll we'll have to see how that goes. But no matter what, in the future, Tennessee will be solidly behind Donald Trump uh, in in the upcoming general election. Uh, we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, there's a new Politico has a new list of the ten points of of American politics in 2024. And one of the main ones of those is that the national election doesn't really matter. The election will be decided in 10 swing states, and whoever wins those states is going to be the victor. So I think that this is boiling down. You know, there's not a chance that uh, Trump can win California and New York, and there's not a chance that Biden can win um, Texas or uh, Tennessee. So we'll have to see how it comes out. Yeah, and, and and we're gonna hear all about it. We got we have a long way to go here as we're moving forward. Very long go way. go to you and and uh, and kind of get your thoughts. You've already kind of talked about. You know some people, some some Haley supporters who may just stay home and they're not sure what they want to do. I think ABC had some numbers too, talking about how uh, Haley voters in Virginia and North Carolina, like seventy nine percent of them, said that they they're not sure what they're going to do. Uh, will they go and support the Republican Party or will they have to sit back and think about it? So um, going forward here, as far as the, the, the two candidates, what, what are your thoughts? What are some things you're going to be looking for as we move forward now? Yeah, I mean, I agree with Craig. I don't think New Hampshire the, or D.C., this, the areas that Haley won are going to decide the election. Sure. However, the states where she got, you know, 15, even 20 percent of the vote, you know, North Carolina, Virginia, Ohio, Florida, that percentage can definitely swing the election. I don't. It's not going to be a huge gap, I don't think, between Trump and Biden in those swing states, in those 10 or so states that Craig's talking about. And Trump cannot afford to lose, you know, 10% of the voters of his party. If 10% sat out and stayed home, they don't have to vote for Biden. It's going to hurt Trump. Um, I think he's got to try to sway those voters. And I, I think there's a certain percentage of them who will not vote that way. And particularly, I mean, my friends, a lot of my friends are lawyers, and a lot of the lawyer Republican friends that I have will not vote for Trump. Um, and part of that is because of his legal troubles and how they view the law and how he treats the law and how he's treated the law and the, and the cases that he's been in front of uh, where juries have convicted him. Uh, and they simply don't think that that's appropriate to be president of the United States, and they're not going to vote for him. Um, and, and I think that's going to decide this election. Michael, let me ask you something. Uh, obviously, and we're just going to repeat it again. We're, we're recording this right before the State of the Union. Uh, mm -hmm. Can Biden, though, create some enthusiasm uh, and as far as rallying the troops, so, so to speak, as, as we move forward here? I mean, there's some polls that have uh, the former president uh, uh, on top. Others have it a, a very close race. Um, as far as the president's status moving forward, what does he have to do uh, as, we, as we move forward toward November? Uh, the first thing he needs to do is he needs to get younger. And uh, and that is going to be a big topic. Different. We've already heard that brought up. You know, that is yeah. something a lot of people are discussing, really about both I, candidates, I, really. But Exactly. But but I got to tell you, every time I make notes in preparation for an interview or in preparation for what we're doing, I always make a note to myself that I characterize uh, Joe Biden and, and the position he finds himself in at his age, in his state of mental decline, I just consider this to be tantamount to elder abuse. I mean, he is really struggling to maintain the uh, acuity that's needed to just be present. Um, too many times I've seen him be confused about which side of the stage to exit. Um, I've seen him fall a lot. I've seen him uh, just be confused. And and it it offends my sensibilities that, that he is being pushed and 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 no one is willing to say to him, you know, you might need to consider whether or not this is really what's best for you or the country, because we're talking about an individual who's running uh, for the office of most powerful person in the world. And we're not certain if he knows what day it is. Now, I'm, I'm talking real talk. I, I'm really concerned about well, let's just say Joe Biden wins in November. Are we confident that in 2025, in 2026, he will not to, to, to decline dramatically? And Lord only knows what the world would, what would happen if, if Mala Harris became president, because she does not have a, 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 a strong footing in terms of people's belief that she could really run the country or be a, a leader, a world leader. So 
I, I'm, I'm just really concerned about the history we are about to make. Whether we elect Joe Biden or Donald Trump, it's, it's trouble for the United States either way. And on that note, President, right. I'm going to get your thoughts on this. Ellie, I want you to hold that thought. We need to take a quick break. Stay with us. We're going to be right back with more of Tennessee this week. And welcome back to Tennessee This Week. I'm Bo Williams, and we are continuing our discussion, looking back on Super Tuesday, focusing primarily right now on the presidential primaries. And we heard some pretty strong words from Michael just a few moments ago concerning President Biden uh, moving forward. Craig, I do want to come to you in a second, but Shelly, you wanted to jump in right there before we had to take the break. So I want to get your thoughts on kind of what Michael was saying. I was just going to say, I think a lot of people have the same concerns that Michael's expressing about Biden. They have the same concerns about Trump. Um, neither one of them are young. Both of them mix up um, where they are sometimes or people's names. Uh, they're both elderly. I don't think anyone's disputing that. I think this is the matchup no one wanted. Uh, we know Kamala Harris. She's been vice president for the last four years. I think it's going to be very interesting to see who Trump's pick is. And a lot of people are going to be considering that this is one election that the vice president may actually step in and become president at some point in the next four years for either party. Um, so I think Trump's pick there is going to be more important than it is in other years. You know, if, if he picks a Sarah Palin who struggles in the campaign, I think it can change the election. So, Craig, let, let's go with that for, with you, kind of what Shelley was talking about, because that was going to be the next topic we wanted to jump on. Um, we, we, we know the setup on the Democratic side, we still don't know who pres or the former president is going to select to run alongside of him on the Republican ticket. Um, how important is this going to be? You heard Shelley say this this could be what swings everything one way or the other. Um, or and do you have any idea thoughts on on who Donald Trump may select to be his VP? Well, I, yes, it, there may be a little bit more importance of the vice president on this race, but the race is never about the vice president. It's always about the guys uh, or girls at the top of the list. And, you know, we have these issues. I mean, Donald Trump often thinks he's running against Barack Obama. So uh, they both have cognitive issues that uh, comes with the uh, where they are in life. And, and uh, you know, I'm approaching that stage. I don't know that I'm competent enough to be president, but... Uh, Anyway, I think that those are issues that the electorate is going to have to uh, to uh, filter through. And, and then, of course, there's Trump's legal issues that, mm -hmm. that no other person running for president has ever had to deal with. So we'll have to see how that all plays out. If I was betting, I bet Stefanik, uh, mm -hmm. second in charge uh, in the in the Republicans in the House. Uh, she's a re uh, an attack dog. I think she would fit well into the, the Trump world. So that's who I would pick uh, as my leading candidate for vice president now. But, you know, that's not, Donald and I haven't talked today, so I can't confirm that, you know, <laughs> but uh, that's just my my speculation. Gotcha. Michael, what do you think? Uh, I want to get your thoughts. Uh, who, who, who could Donald Trump possibly go with as far as being his VP candidate? Well, I know he's um, I, I think uh, Christy Nome, mm -hmm. Governor Christy Nome is is a dark horse. Um, he has mentioned, or, or Tim Scott has been close uh, to the president. I don't, I don't think that that would be his choice. Um, probably um, DeSantis would not be his choice. Uh, so I think it will be a surprise. Craig might be right that, that there's 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 a good chance that Stefani could could be his choice. Um, and I think there'll be some other names that will come up at some point that that yeah. we're not hearing about now. And, and Shelley, we're, we we got less than a minute, but I do want to give let you. Give us, throw, throw out a name or two here. Anybody that comes to mind as far as the Republican side? You know, I tend to agree with Craig. I, I don't think Tim Scott's out of the running. Mm -hmm. um, I, he's gotten closer. He's been with Donald Trump on a lot of campaign stops. Um, you know, strong in South Carolina. I could see Trump picking uh, Tim Scott as his VP. All right. And on that note, guys, we appreciate it. Uh, we're going to be talking a whole lot more about this over the next weeks, months, as we continue to make our way uh, toward uh, November. Uh, just a reminder for you, we will not have Tennessee this week next week. But, of course, keep it tuned right here. We will keep you up to date. Check your cable guide as well. Of course, we always look forward to seeing you on Sunday. All right, guys, thanks so much again. We appreciate it, as always, your input. And we appreciate everyone out there for watching as well. That is Tennessee this week. Thank you. 
views of guests on Tennessee This Week are their own and do not represent the views of WATE6 on your side or Next Star Broadcasting.